Ross Kickle, and have you ever overdosed magnesium in your coral reef aquarium? And when I say overdosed, I mean like well north of 2,000 parts per million, right? For an extended period of time, like six to eight weeks kind of thing. I have, and that's what's coming up on this episode of American Reef. We're going to go over kind of all the details of how it happened and what I'm doing to fix it. But the cut to the chase, right? Basically, 100% human error, right? And how it happened, basically, I stopped testing. I stopped doing water changes, right? And as such, I manually was dosing magnesium, to which I thought was basically soda ash for alkalinity. And I was doing this for, again, six to eight weeks. And ultimately, some things went wrong, right? So let's talk about how that kind of came to be. Basically, I had some life events that pulled my time away where I couldn't spend a lot of time in front of the reef tank. Um, and basically, while I was conducting an experiment, meaning my experiment, I was manually adding soda ash to see if I could get alkalinity up high and sustained, right? Um, and I was doing it manually. And with that soda ash, basically, um, when these events in my life kind of occurred, what happened was I figured, hey, I could still dose at night and, you know, figure out what's going on because I ultimately I wanted to do, do it over an extended period of time, right? So what I was doing is, again, I would see the tank at night, right, when the attendants were on, or early morning, and what I would do is I would dose soda ash, right? Um, well, one night, attendants were on, sitting down looking at the tank, and I see these kind of green polyps, the neon polyps kind of floating in the water column. I'm like, that's weird. Didn't think much of it, but I did make a mental note of it, right? And then at that point, I kind of like was, well, just let it go, right? So I'm doing the normal thing. And a few days later, um, basically my schedule freed up where I could actually see what was going on in the tank during the day. So polyps extended, etc. And in my particular case, I looked at some frog spawn that I have had for decades and the polyps were retracted, right? Not all of them, but maybe like six heads, something like that. And I looked at that and I thought, well, that's not right, right? Some, something's up there. And then I started looking around the tank and I noticed I've got two filefish that are dead. Because I'm starting to see some aptasia in here and I'm looking at it and it looks like they've been dead for at least a good day or two, right? Um, they were stuck in a power head that I have behind my rock work that I kind of blow all the dirt and detritus and all that out from underneath the rocks. So they were actually stuck on it. And I looked at that and I'm like, man, something's definitely not right. So the first thing that I did, time to test, right? So first thing when I'm looking at like, the testing, it was conductivity on the apex. That still looks good. And manual, I checked it, uh, you know, with the HANA checker. Um, and again, basically that looked well. It looked as it should look. So I get out the Red Sea Pro test kit and I start hitting it. And again, I hadn't tested for probably a good month and change, right? Um, when I say change, six weeks to eight weeks, that kind of thing. Um, so to that point, we go down through and guess what was off the charts? 
the magnesium. And when I say off the charts, I mean literally off the charts. The way that that titration works is when you use about like 0.8 of that syringe up, right, that's going to get you at 1600. Well, in my particular case, I put the whole syringe in and it never budged, meaning it normally goes from a pink to a blue. It never budged, period, end of story, right? So to that point, I knew I had an issue. And in my mind, the idea behind this is first thing I want to do is I want to fix my issue when I probably should have thought maybe I should figure out what caused it first. But in my mind, high magnesium, uh, again, I always heard that nothing bad happens when it's high except for maybe when you get in that 2,000 parts per million area where, uh, you know, again, your kind of crustaceans, things like that will have issues with it. They'll die off, etc. Um, but never fish, and in my case, that tells me it must have been really high. So either way, I look at it and go, okay, what are my two solutions here? Well, ultimately, you can do it chemically or with water changes. Chemically, basically, it's using calc wasser in a reactor, et cetera, and that was kind of too difficult in my mind because I was struggling for time. And in my particular case, I said, I'll just do water changes, right? The idea is simple. You take 25% water changes and do them weekly, and then, you know, over a period of about four weeks, you kind of get to where you got to be. And again, I like that approach because it does it slowly. Though I want to fix it like that, again, it didn't happen overnight. I don't want to fix it overnight, so to speak, because I still really want to. That being said, though, that was the approach that I've taken. So I'm thinking, okay, now to do this, how do I do it right? Well, the first thing that I got to do is I have to test my makeup water to make sure that the instant ocean that I'm using, uh, the magnesium is low, right? Because I want it to be way lower than that 2,000 and change parts per million. Um, so to that point, I tested that and right off the bat, I was kind of like, I expected the instant ocean, uh, the magnesium in that instant ocean to be somewhere around 1,200, 1,300, something like that. It wasn't. Like in this particular case, um, it was near the 1600s. So again, high. Not overly high, meaning 2,000 parts per million, etc. But it was higher than I thought it would be. Regardless, I wanted to get it down and going anyway, so I, I went that route. And again, I'm probably, again, two water changes into that. And so far, things look like they're not pulling back any further. So I stopped the damage and Hopefully, it'll kind of be on the mend. that I kind of had a plan going forward to remedy the issue that I caused, right? I wanted to figure out what was the cause. And again, rewind a little bit. What I was doing is I was conducting an experiment on that tank tank to see keeping alkalinity high if it really did increase the growth of my LPS corals. Um, we know it works that way for your stonies, but thinking the LPS are the same kind of thing. So that's why originally I was dosing soda ash and I was doing it manually, right, to see if that elevated levels, right, would truly help. And when I say elevated, I mean my goal is to kind of keep it really high on the pH side of it. Um, that being said, basically, in my mind, when these things started pulling against my time, I was like, listen, I was dosing it manually anyway, and these things usually take six months, et cetera, so I didn't want to lose that time frame because I knew it was going to be four weeks, eight weeks, maybe even longer before I could get my schedule back to what it should have been. So I said, okay, let's just kind of continue what we're doing. And what I would do is I would take the soda ash and basically go through and pour it in the overflow, right? Now, in that overflow, what had happened ultimately was um, I would have the skimmer off, right? And so I didn't care about kind of the calcification that you get, right, when you pour it into the overflow. But in general, for the new hobbyists out there, it's probably not a good idea, 
Like to, just to do that, just so you know. My rationale was I had just cleaned the return pump and at the same time I was dosing it such that I figured it would be mixing a lot higher with the water so it would be diluted more. And again, bad idea, uh, but it's the idea that I was kind of seeing through anyway. Um, time constraints happen and what do you know I run out of the jug so I grab another jug because I have these things pre-made so I don't have to do one jug at a time but I had like two or three of these bulk grief supply mixing jugs right of the alkalinity well again what I thought was soda ash was actually magnesium what I did is I had three jugs two of jugs were alkalinity, soda ash, one jug was magnesium. And in my mind, all three were the alkalinity. And the, how I didn't catch it is because when I grabbed that new jug, number one, these beautiful little labels on the side that say what's on it, the little check mark marks, I never did that. Why? I have no clue. Stupidity, laziness, it could be a lot of things. But either way, that didn't happen. And so, number one, I didn't catch it that way. When I poured the solution in, right, again, the idea was I put it in that overflow and I would dilute it so I never saw that little white cloudiness that you get when you have basically the soda ash that you put into the tank. Um, and so, long story made short, or maybe long story made longer, um, that's how the overdosing occurred, right? And in my mind, it was one of those things where even at that, the percentage right of magnesium that I put in compared to, again, what was, uh, we'll say, building up, to me, I thought it would take longer right to exceed those levels. In my particular case, it didn't. Not exactly sure why, but it didn't. Right? And so, to that point, that's actually what happened. This is the, the, to me, this is the important part and the reason why I do these videos. First lesson learned, right? If I would have continued my testing, found a way to find the time at least to test for the three biggies, right? Calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, right? Then I would have been able to catch this sooner before it was an issue. That did not occur, right? The second thing, obviously, is the water changes because the water changes would have done this, raised the magnesium, and then when I changed it, it would have dropped it a little bit. Again, something that should have happened, didn't happen, and I justified it, you know, in all kind of ways, but ultimately now I'm kind of like, I wish I would have found the time, right? So those two simple things would have actually solved my issue. <laughs> now, ready? The, the, the last thing I'll say is use these little labels on the side and mark it, right? That way you don't make the same stu stupid mistake that I made by just grabbing a magnesium when I thought it was alkalinity. Right? And so for the most part, those are the kind of things that I can look back and say, well, I wish I would have done differently. You know, there are a few other ones as far as like the dosing manually and stuff like that that I try to eliminate right by not doing manual things because they can always go wrong but then automation kind of goes wrong too so that being said i'd probably still do that again um but i'd make sure that i would test as well as doing the water changes um now the other kind of takeaway from this is in my mind things you know basically you it was really hard to overdose magnesium meaning um the living organisms inside the tank wouldn't be greatly affected by higher magnesium levels, right? And I knew that if I had got it north of about 2,000 parts per million, that crustaceans, etc., right, 
would not necessarily like it. They'd probably die off, etc. Um, and to that case, I never thought fish would be truly affected by the higher magnesium levels. But apparently, at least in my case, those two file fish, again, they were affected by the higher levels of magnesium. So now, as we're kind of going through the lessons learned kind of thing, I'm thinking that is one thing that you want to take away from this as far as magnesium, higher levels of magnesium can be tolerated. However, you know, when you get north of that 2,000 parts per million, you know, obviously some fish will also be affected as well as the crustaceans, you know, and shrimp, things of that nature. And that's my lesson and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I made and this video helps in some small, small way. Um, if you have any questions at all on anything that I mentioned here today, feel free to give me a shout, right? Um, otherwise, Good luck with your magnesium levels and uh, try to keep them lower than 2,000 parts per million.